I think we shall get started in a minute. Hi, Sheena. Thanks for joining us. Um, just to explain, so usually when I do these classes, because I do them every week for my pupils, um, we have chat going and then I can respond instantly to anyone in chat, um, which I like. But today there is a 10 to 15 second delay um, between me saying something and you hearing it. So it's going to be a little less interactive than normal. So I'm going to have specific times when you can send me your example sentences and then I'll wait and read those all at once rather than going back and forth. Um, but bear with me please if there's a bit of a delay or if I'm not responding to what you wrote um, because there is that tech delay today. Okay, um, hi Kian. Um, hi there, I don't know um, the child's name in some of these cases, but hi Anthony, thanks for joining us. Hey, I think we shall get started in a second, just to tell you who I am, because I know not everyone knows. So my name is Camilla, I'm the founder of Wordia, which produces vocab resources, which are all designed to be fun and super effective. And I'm also the founder of Kin Learning, which is a tutoring center. Um, we are in Bromley and also online. Um, so we specialize in those Kent exams, like Olav's Newstead, Bexley, Kent. Um, I went to Newstead, so grammar school in Kent myself the secondary school um, and so we prepare children throughout the year or we do the wordy stuff which is just vocabulary based. Okay hi Olivia, I know you well. Good I'm glad you're excited, me too. Okay um, so can you give me just, um, if you're in year five can you press the heart button for me so I know who's year five and if you're in year four can you press the thumbs up? If you're neither year can you type in chat? Hey Nian. Okay, so we've got at least one year five, two year fives. Who else is in year five? So press heart for the year fives and the thumbs up for the year fours. Okay, so mostly year five so far, I think. Okay, a few year fours, good. Now year fours, um, you will probably naturally write a little slower than the year fives. I will try and give you all enough time to write everything. If you don't manage to get the full definition down, don't worry, I'll give you some time to catch up um, before I go on to the next screen. Like I said, because there's a bit of a delay um, in between you hearing things, then it means that I can't just pause um, if I'm going too quickly and you haven't had a chance to write everything. So bear with me. Um, I will give you time to catch up, okay? If you are younger than year four, I don't know if anyone is, um, then it's probably gonna be too hard for you to keep up with the writing. So just say the definition. I'll say the definition out loud, and then you just repeat it at home, and that will help you to remember the new word. Okay, I think we shall get started. Let's go. Okay, so activity one. So we're going to go through a few words, as you'll have seen, um, this, the theme of this session is strength and weakness. So these are some words that are to do with the strength of your feelings. And actually, I think all of these are strong feelings rather than weak feelings. So to do with the strength of your feelings, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit there. Oh, I've got a peak of that one. Okay, so vehement is our first word. Um, if you think you know what that means, then you can write it in chat. Um, so example sentence. The longer we argued, the more vehement she became. So how might someone behave if you keep arguing with them? Um, and then the other example sentence is, even though he had been caught red-handed, the boy vehemently denied stealing the laptop. So what do you think vehement could mean? So he vehemently denied it. Okay, tell me in the chat if you think you know what it means. And then we've got some collocations here. Now collocations are word pairings or little groups of words that we would commonly use. So vehemently denied, that's a phrase that we use a lot um, when we want to say that um, someone denied something a great deal. Good, um, Harriet, that is adamant. Adamant is a good word for it, yep. Yeah. Um, they would be annoyed and they're getting, um, more worked up, I would say. 
Um, perhaps not giving up? Um, not quickly, not quite. So you can vehemently deny something. So if you've been accused of something and you think that the other person is wrong, you didn't do anything, you would vehemently deny it. Um, passionately, yes, that is a good word for it. Um, and you can be in vehement opposition to something. So opposition is when you are against something, you're arguing against something. Um, so if you really believe that something is wrong, you might be described as being in vehement opposition to it. So I'm going to show you the definition now. So it's showing very strong feelings, especially anger. So I think, Niam, you've mentioned being annoyed. It's to do with that kind of thing. Good, very angry, passionately disagreeing, yes. Fiercely good. Okay, so get that definition down for me. So showing very strong feelings, especially anger. Note the spelling of especially, by the way, because that's a bit of a tricky one. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to move on. I hope I've given you enough time. Sorry if not. Now the next one is ardent. I have a picture for this. Actually, I think I had a picture for vehement. Um, I'll come back to the picture for vehement. This is my picture for ardent. Hopefully that will be clear on your screen in a second. Um, so the root ardere is Latin and it means to burn. So it's not literally burning here, but if you think about feelings burning. Um, and I thought this was a good picture for an ardent fan, she's making the heart symbol. So it can remind you that she loves what she's watching. She's very passionate about it, exactly. Very keen to support, good, Matthew. Um, so, ardere means to burn, that's what it comes from. And the example sentence is, my dad is an ardent supporter of Folkestone Football Club. He hasn't missed a home game in over 30 years. Passionate, loving, yeah, very passionate. Yeah, so vehement was you're passionate about something but you're probably angry about it. Ardent, you just love it. Um, so the collocations here, you can say someone is, is an ardent fan, an ardent supporter, ardent lover or ardent admirer of someone. So if you really look up to someone, you might be an ardent admirer of those. Yes, zealous would be a great word for it. We'll come to that later as well. Um, oops. So ardent, let's look at our definitions. Very enthusiastic about something or someone. So if you were on YouTube and you saw lots of comments and lots of um, likes and stuff, you went, wow, this person has some really ardent supporters. Ardent means very enthusiastic about something or someone. Give you time to write that. Okay, I'll move on. Don't panic if you haven't got it yet. Put down on paper. Now, fervent. You may say it was her fervent wish that she was accepted into her first choice university. And you could say he fervently believed that the doctors could find a cure for his son's disease. What do you reckon about fervent? It's someone's fervent wish, or you fervently believe something. Um, can you write your own meaning? I would say write the definition from the board. If you're revising these at some point, then you can um, come up with your own meaning. But sometimes if you write your own meaning, it's a little bit different to the proper meaning. And then I don't want you to remember the wrong thing. So just copy it from the board is best. Okay, so fervent. Um, paying attention to detail. It, depending on the situation, I guess it could be, um, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a synonym of meticulous. Um, the greatest, yeah, your greatest wish, um, strong, you want to believe it happens, yeah. So fervent, it is a synonym of ardent, but I think of it a little bit more, like you're more desperate. Um, so you're holding on to hope, perhaps, but they are basically the same thing. So ardent, fervent, 
So having very deep and genuine feelings about something. It's fervent. Um, Livia, so something that would definitely not happen. Not definitely not, I don't think, but perhaps um, if you fervently believe something, you could fervently believe in something that's unlikely to happen, but you're still holding on to hope. Good, seeing some nice likes, good. Hope that means you're learning and enjoying what you're doing. If you've learned a new word already, do you want to send the heart to like? Let me know. What does enthusiastic mean? It, enthusiastic mean? It means that you are very keen to do something, you're very happy about doing it, you want to jump right in and get involved in it. Good point, I should have explained that earlier. Okay. Next one. Good. I see some hearts. So you've learned something already. Perfect. Let's keep going. Uh, so zealous. Um, the politician's zealous supporters worked tirelessly day and night to help him to win the election. So they are zealous. And then when making a birthday card, I was a little overzealous. So a slight variation on the word. I was a little overzealous with the glitter and now I have glitter on my hands, face and all over the floor. So what do you think zealous means? And what do you think overzealous means? So if you are overzealous with the glitter, you might have done this, and now you have glitter everywhere, not just on the card that you were making. Hey, Yazine. Welcome. Okay, so what do we think about overzealous? Or zealous. So they are zealous supporters. Waiting for the delay. Um, let me see if I have a picture of zealous. Oh, I forgot to show you the picture of fervent actually. I'm hoping that will clear up in a second. Because um, the picture of fervent, yes, there you go. So you can see a little boy um, there in the middle. He is a fervent supporter of the football team. So yes, um, overzealous, you're a little overexcited about something, you've gone a bit too far. Um, no, so overzealous means you you went overboard, um, whereas zealous means you are doing a lot, but it's not too much. So you haven't gone crazy with it, you're just keen. But if you're zealous, if you're overzealous, you went crazy, you need to calm down a little bit. Okay. Um, so zealous, showing great energy or enthusiasm for something. If you're overzealous, you showed too much energy. Yes, yeah, overload. Remember, if you've um, just joined us, you missed me saying at the beginning, there is a delay between um, me speaking and you hearing what I've said. Um, so if I don't seem to be responding to what you've said, or if there's a delay or something, bear with me. It's just because of the tech delay. Okay, so someone's sister was overzealous with the glitter as well. It's easy to be overzealous with glitter, it gets exciting. Okay, make sure you've got that definition down for me. Ah, it. Okay. So zealous, having great energy. Um, you can be a zealot, which is usually considered a bad thing. Um, like you're going overboard, you're fanatical about something, some might say. Um, so it's perhaps you're obsessed and it's taking over your life if you are a zealot. That zealous can just be a good thing. You're just going and like bouncing in enthusiastically. Okay, vociferous. Uh, now, some of you that have done the wordier classes with me before will know that vox, the Latin vox, means voice. And so vociferous comes from the Latin for voice, which is a clue as to what this word means. So, for example, a few vociferous parents complained that the children's playtime was too long. So think about voice there, and they're complaining. 
So, um, and then you can also have the toddler couldn't form sentences, but still complained vociferously about going to bed. Yes, I like your emoji for overzealous there with the heart eyes. I'd say that would work for ardent as well. Okay, so vociferous, the toddler complained vociferously about going to bed. Um, could be speaking harshly, depending on the context, yeah. What else do we think? You can't see the words. Can other people see the words? Uh, protesting, potentially, yes. Yeah. So um, you might have vociferous protesters. Angrily, firmly, good. I like all of these. Um, yeah, so you're using your voice a lot. You're being, well, what, what are you being if you're using your voice a lot? You're being loud, usually. Um, yes, so rudely as well. Good. It could be rudely. So um, the toddler complained vociferously. I actually saw a video of a toddler doing that the other day. So they said, mm -mm 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 -mm. just very passionately. And it was quite loud. So even though they couldn't speak. So vociferous, expressing your feelings in a loud and forceful way. Someone said firmly. So yep, forceful, firmly. Expressing your feelings in a loud and forceful way. Being vocal, yeah. Rowdy is with a W, not a U, but yeah, it could be. Um, not necessarily bossy, but a bossy person is likely to be vociferous, yeah. And not violent, because remember, this is to do with just the voice. So it's not like you're acting in a violent way, but you are speaking loudly. Perhaps because you're worked up about something. Um, not sure about that emoji for vociferous. I would say if you have some, an emoji of someone going like that, then perhaps that would be the more appropriate emoji. And then vigor. Um, if you haven't got the definition from before down, just don't worry, we'll keep going. Um, vigor, the collocations are renewed and youthful. So you may do something with renewed vigor or with youthful vigor. Um, and I have a picture of this man. He is shaking the container vigorously. Sometimes in the instructions for something, if you need to mix two things, they may say shake vigorously. Um, with great strength, good. Um, so the example sentences, we have after half time, the, the team returned to the pitch with renewed vigor. And then also I poured the ingredients into the bottle and shook the mixture vigorously before serving. Yeah, with strength. Good, remember, try not to type the same thing a couple of times for me because it means other messages get lost, but I will respond. Okay, yep. Um, forcefully, yep, with effort, good. Um, I wouldn't say angrily for this one. So shake it vigorously with all your might. And then we've got a couple of phrases. So you might describe someone as um, approaching something with vim and vigor. And vim is just being healthy and energetic. And then, or you could say, um, she arrived at 5 a.m. full of vigor. So it's to do with strength and again, enthusiasm. Energetic, yeah, good. So energy, strength, and enthusiasm. Think that will come up on your screen soon. Okay, so if you haven't got all of the definitions down yet, write the definitions down, make sure you're caught up. If you have got the definitions down, can you please um, see if you can send me some example sentences with um, the words from the board or with one of the words from the board? Yes, you're um, with. I'd say that's with arriving with vigor, yes. You're very handy with the emojis here. I like it. Yeah, I'd say that's, that's a good emoji for vigor. Um, that person's possibly being, possibly been a little overzealous in that emoji. People can see it. Um, in the emoji, 
the woman seems to have knocked over the table because she was shouting, let's go. Um, so that's perhaps overzealous because now you're causing um, an accident. Um, legitimately, I think you mean, not legitly. Um, I think you can send example sentences. So example sentences for anyone once you're ready. Great to have a read. Bear with me because of the delay and got to wait longer for, to get your example sentences. Good, so I've got one. Um, she shook my hand vigorously, good. My hand felt as if it was going to fall off. Yeah, good one. Here you go, shaking it vigorously. That'd be a good uh, sentence to use in a story when you've introduced a character. It tells us a little bit about the character there, doesn't it? Because um, if they're shaking your hand vigorously, perhaps they're an enthusiastic person, perhaps they're a little overzealous. That's okay, don't worry if you're not ready. Just get the definitions down. If you don't have time to send me an example sentence, don't worry. There'll be time later as well. The player was very vehement when he lost the match. I would use, hmm, so vehement, we've got, I'm trying to think how to rephrase that. Um, so vehement, you usually use it when someone is speaking and interacting with someone. Um, so could you describe how they, um, perhaps when the player lost the match and they went to talk to the journalists, they were vehemently defending their performance or something. So then we've got the anger and the passion, um, but we just used it slightly differently. Good going. As the girl was upset, she vociferously cried. Is that used correctly? I'd say just about, yeah. Um, but my only question around it is because she cried because vociferous is um, expressing your opinions. So um, is she expressing an opinion through that? Um, but if you're upset, you are likely to do something vociferously. Um, so careful with your homonyms there, it's not through like that, it would be through T-H-R-E-W. Um, she vigorously threw me the PS4 controller, yeah. Mm, can't have a vehement face. So if you're not sure how to use some of these guys, have, try and use them with the collocations because it will make it so much easier. So try and use like vehement denial or vehement opposition. There are collocations for ardent as well. Due to the strong waves in the sea, I had to paddle the kayak vigorously. Good, I like that one. The girl pushed her sister vehemently because her sister had broken her favorite toy. Yeah. Um, the vociferous child fought for human rights. Yeah, good. Uh, he was very ardent about beating the, about, beating his opponent maybe, rather than the better op opponent. Remember, you can use ardent, we've got loads of collocations there to use it with. We don't often say very ardent, and I, I think a lot of people feel they should when they first learn the word, but we don't usually. So we say you are an ardent something. So we have to follow it by a noun. My friend is an ardent supporter of football. Yes, good, so we've got the collocation there. Um, the band's zealous supporters cheered as loudly as aer aeroplanes, good. Zealous supporters is a good way to use it. Um, the boy is very zealous about aeroplanes, yeah. So zealous is another one where it would be good to use it with a noun afterwards. Um, overzealous is a good word to use in a sentence as well. Olivia, that's nice to compliment a sentence. Um, my dad is an ardent supporter of football, good. She was an ardent reader of the Harry Potter series. Yeah, that would work. Okay, let's go on to activity two. Ooh, it's been nearly half an hour already. Oh. 
And I had another picture to show you. We've got so vehement or vociferous. This boy looks like he is vehemently expressing his opinions. Or he is being vociferous in the way that he speaks. Okay, activity two. Let's do some more new words. So these words are about the strength or weakness of your character. So are you a strong person or a weak person? Um, weak, like cowardly, likely to run away. Um, the lesson's supposed to end at quarter to seven, but let's see how we go. Um, I might need to hurry up if that's gonna happen. Okay, so fortitude. Fortis is Latin for strong. So fortitude is gonna be do, to do with strong. And you can say, although they had been losing for most of the match, the team continued with fortitude. So that is courage shown even in the face of great difficulty. That's courage shown even in the face of great difficulty. So they did it with fortitude. Now fortitude is a noun. So you can say they um, showed fortitude or they did it with fortitude. You couldn't say she was very fortitude because then you'd be using it as an adjective. Not brute force, um, just with inner strength. Yeah, um, perhaps less strength and enthusiasm and more strength and determination. And you're, so you're showing courage. Okay, stoic. Um, now this relates, I don't know if any of you have ever heard the phrase, a stiff upper lip. So the British often pride themselves on having a stiff upper lip and it means that you don't complain, you don't cry. I think it's to do, the reason we say stiff upper lip is because maybe when you cry your um, lips quiver. Um, so you just get on with things. That's a, thought to be a very British attitude. So the example sentence is, my grandfather was stoic by nature and never complained about being lonely or in pain. So my grandfather was stoic by nature and the clue here is never complained about being lonely or in pain. And you can also say the teacher was amazed by his student's stoic determination to improve her vocabulary. The stoic determination and you may be very stoic. So if you don't complain, able to go through pain without showing emotion or complaining. The fort in fortitude, um, it doesn't relate to fortnight. Fortnight is called that because there are 14 nights in two weeks. So it's a, it's a shortened version of 14. Yes, you have a strong character if you are stoic. Um, you may show fortitude in the 11 plus. So um, perhaps, especially if you were sick or something, and you still went into the exam, then you would be showing fortitude there. And yes, so as Saba says, stoicism is a remarkable quality to have. So you just get on with things and you don't complain. So fortitude and stoicism are synonyms, but stoic is an adjective. So you can describe someone as stoic. So she is stoic. You put on a brave face, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so able to go through pain without showing emotion or complaining. The not complaining part is important for that. Okay, lily livered. Not a phrase that we use very often, and it's a little old fashioned, but I like the word um, and I like the alliteration in it. So I wanted to talk about it. Um, so lily livered, you could say, Come back, you lily livered weasel, shouted the man as. He ran after the thief. So what do you think lily livered could mean? Weak, yeah, cowardly. I'm just gonna write cowardly for that one. So you could say the cowardly weasel, lily livered weasel. Yes, yeah, so stoicism is a quality required in the 11 plus by both children and their parents, exactly. You don't get through all that work if you're not pretty stoic. Okay, 
endure. Some of you may have heard this one before. Um, yeah, we can scare the lily livid as well. Um, okay, so example sentence. My mother has endured numerous leg operations during the last two years. So she has endured several operations. And then you could also say before they could join the army, the recruits had to go through a two day endurance challenge. They had to climb mountains, carry heavy loads and survive on only four hours sleep. To bear with something, yeah. To, to bear something really, to put up with it. So. So your definition there is to put up with something. If you endure it, you put up with it. So if you had, if you describe something as um, like, if you said, I have to endure it, then it implies that it's not nice. It's not fun. Um, it's difficult in some way or unpleasant. If you went to a concert and someone said, did you enjoy it? And you might say, well, I endured it. So you got through it even though it was unpleasant. Okay, resolve. I should get to my picture. Okay, so you can see the resolve on this young man's face. Um, I greatly admired her steadfast resolve to succeed, even in the face of a global pandemic. So you admire someone's resolve in that. And also, Okay, I'm back. Hey, um, guys, can you just confirm that you can hear me? Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Okay, so we were talking about resolve and you were saying, um, oh, you said conclusion. Yes, so the conclusion of something, um, the resolution um, could be the same kind of thing. Okay, um, striving through hard times, yep, determination. Okay, let's go to a definition for resolve. Thank you for confirming that I'm back on, sorry about that. Okay, so resolve, we've got three definitions. So it can be a noun, the determination. So you showed your resolve, you can see the resolve on that man's face that he's running through with determination. Um, you may resolve to do something. So I am going to do it, I resolve to do it. Um, or you could say to fix a problem. So that's like, I think that illness will resolve itself. It's going to fix itself. Can you write those down, please? To solve or settle something, yeah. Could be for that third definition. Okay, so get that written down for me, please. Okay, spineless. There's another one with a very short definition. So it's, you might say, the spineless man let his son take the blame for his crimes. That would be a very spineless thing to do. Let his son take, his bl take the blame. So if you are spineless, you are cowardly as well. So lily-livered, spineless, same kind of thing. Spineless is a more modern word that we would still use um, more commonly than lily-livered though. Feeble, perhaps, yeah, depending on the situation. So spineless goes with cowardly, without a spine. So yes, it can, if you're talking about an animal, you can literally have a spineless animal, doesn't have a spine. Um, but if a person is spineless, then they are cowardly. Um, you might be heartless. Um, 
I don't think heartless and spineless are the same thing because you might be cowardly but care. You're just too cowardly to actually do the right thing. Okay, um, so no, no strength of character, I would say. Um, okay, metal. Note the spelling, metal. So you might test your metal, we could say. So for example, the courageous volunteers proved their metal when they participated in a grueling triathlon. So you prove your metal. Maybe tell me what you think that could mean. Um, and there's an idiom here to be on your metal. For example, my tennis coach warned me to be on my metal for my match against the country's number one player. What do you think that means? So you, you have to prove your metal or you can be on your metal as the idiom. It's not necessarily courageous. Um, Determination, yes. There's something else that's part of it. Um, not prove their rights. Prove something. Yes. Does that definition come from the dictionary? Um, so it's the person's ability to cope well with difficulties, spirit and resilience. Yes. So metal um, could be resilience. To prove yourself. Yes. So to prove your ability. That would be a good one. So metal, the determination or ability to do something. Prove your metal, you prove your determination and ability. You show what you're worth. Um, perhaps, so you, if you prove your metal, you're proving that you are um, showing your perseverance, yeah. Perhaps bravery, but it's more to do with ability and determination. So to do a resolve a little bit as well. So that in that picture of the man uh, running in a rugby match, perhaps he proved his metal by, I want to say scoring a try, but I've never watched a rugby game in my life. So I'm not sure if the right, that's the right phrase, but I think you would prove your metal by scoring a try. So getting points. Okay, dominant. Oh, what is an idiom? An idiom is a short phrase. It's not a full sentence, but it's a short phrase that we use to express an idea. And it doesn't mean the, um, doesn't mean the same thing as what it says. So the words in it shouldn't be taken literally, but they um, show, express another idea. So be on your metal. It means to be like on top of your game, to be ready, prepared. Okay, and then dominant. Now, this root is a good one to remember, domini or dominus, uh, because it means lord in Latin. So there are some other words like domineering that relate to this lord uh, root as well. So it's quite a good one to remember. Okay, so our example sentence, I broke my wrist and had to write with my non-dominant hand for six weeks. So we, pretty much everyone, will have a dominant hand and a non-dominant hand. If you don't have a dominant hand, you are what is called ambidextrous. So think about the meaning of it as Lord. So what could your dominant hand be? Having power over, yeah. So more powerful. So your dominant hand is the more powerful one, the one that you use more often. Yesterday I had my COVID injection and they asked me, which is my dominant hand, because they wanted to put the injection into my non-dominant arm so that it wasn't a problem. I could still use my dominant hand. Okay, so to dominate is to control. Yes, yeah, so it's all to do with acting like the Lord, the boss in a situation. Um, so dominant, the definition is stronger or more important than something or someone else. I forgot to read the example sentence, the second one. I took a dominant role in the activity as I was the only person with experience. So a stronger, more important role. So that's the meaning of dominant. And if you have written those down, do you want to send me some example sentences? So non-dominant hand, um, it could be kind of the not useful hand, the less strong one. You can't rely on it as much as the dominant hand. Controlling, yes, in some situations it could be controlling. Try not to write the same thing several times for me, please. 
It is valid in Scrabble. Well, it should be valid in Scrabble. It's a real word. Okay, example sentences. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm ambidextrous, so neither of my hands are dominant. Good. You'd say neither rather than none because you've only got two to choose from there. To dominate is to, con is to take control of someone. Yes, yeah, so does that relate? Yeah, it, it does relate. The new variant is the dominant variant of COVID now. Yeah. Good usage. Remember, it's neither. If you're going to write the sentence again, you have to correct the grammar. They are now in an even more dominant position in the markets. Yes, I hope that came from your brain, not the internet. But yes, you could talk about someone being in a dominant position. Perhaps in a tournament, a team could be in a very dominant position, um, perhaps because they're leading a lot or they've got the best players. I had to endure the harsh storm, nice, like that. Um, my brother, brother tries to be dominant, yep. Yeah. What does ambidextrous means? mean? That's when you don't have a dominant hand, so you can use either hand. Um, so my mum is slightly ambidextrous, so she doesn't write with both hands, but she, she'll brush her teeth with either hand. It's handy if you break a bone or, or something oh, in your arm, um, break your arm because then you can just use the other hand. No one could endure the pain, nice sentence. He's very spineless, yeah. I was very dominant in school, yeah. That may not go down too well, depending on the situation, but yes, that is a good example sentence. Um, a good player might dominate the field as well in something. Um, so take over, they're leading. They're going for the internet, yeah. That's okay. Just remember it. My teachers are lily livered. Did not say that? Um... So coral reefs are one of the dominant, rather than saying things, maybe um, plants or um, not sure what other general words we could have, maybe plants. Okay. Um, you, oh, if you say something as an enduring experience, by the way, um, if something endures in your mind, then it's more like it sticks in your mind and it doesn't go away. If you endure something, then it means that it was difficult for you to put up with. My mum endured the heat from the um, greedy fire to save her kids from burning house. That's dramatic, but yes, you used endure correctly. Well done. The stoic man needed to endure, um, endure his lily-livered son. Yeah, we could say that. Endured the long mountain climb. Good. The detective resolved the case with fortitude. Nice. I like that one very much. Okay, let's go on to the last activity. Now, um, I put activity four on the sheets for some of you. Some of you have got the correct sheets and I was silly, it's activity three. Um, can you try and fill in the sentences on here? So our last activity, using the words at the top. So have a look through. You can send me your answers if you want, just put number them so I know which answers which, and then we'll go through them and then we've got Another few questions after this as well. The man endured the spineless boy's speech yet? Um, you wouldn't say my brother is fortitude, um, but my brother showed fortitude. Would be good as a knight, yeah? A knight would definitely need fortitude. I proved my mettle when I ran 26 miles, lovely. Okay, so can you just try and fill these words in to the gaps? I think I'll just give you like one more minute or so. If you've got the sheets and you've done those, that five, um, those five questions, then you can just go on to the next ones. Okay. Dominating isn't one of the words on the board, by the way. There is a version, um, a related word on there, but it's not one of the words, so just be careful about the usage.
Good. I don't know the child's name, but use the curve. That was um, doing well. Number one's really hard, actually. <laughs> I think it could be a couple of them. Discordant. Um, hopefully, some of my wordier pupils or can learning pupils know what discordant means. Um, but it means that it is noisy and it's a load of noises that don't go together nicely. So it's unpleasant, an unpleasant noise. Got to put the um, choose which word you think should fit in that gap there. Okay, um, I'm going to go through these and then we'll do the next lot. Oh, I meant to give you clues. That's what I usually do with these. So I'll give the clues as I go through. So the teacher had campaigned something to improve children's education in po poorer parts of the country. So the teacher campaigned, campaigned passionately and enthusiastically. Yeah, good, zealously. I know some of you put that earlier. Zealously or vociferously. So, um, either would work there because the synonym so loudly, she was outspoken. Okay. Um, discordant, yes, is like chaos or racket, exactly. The dog trainer said we have a very something dog that thinks he's the boss of the house. So, your clue there is that he thinks he's the boss. So, he's acting like the lord of everyone. He is a dominant dog. Perhaps the dog barks at everyone, he's trying to tell them what to do. It's dominant. I something to become a vegetarian despite my love of meat. So I decided I made up my mind. Um, not I resolve here, but I resolved. Because we would say I decided. So we need to say I resolved. So it's in the same tense. Remember resolve is the noun. So you just have resolve. Oh, well, actually you can use that as a verb, um, but the verb wouldn't make sense in this um, sentence in terms of tenses. Hey, even though I am a vegetarian now, the tantalizing smell of a burger tested my what? Kind of tested your determination, tested your decision. It tested your resolve. Every night I have to something the sound of my neighbor's discordant piano playing. So to put up with, I think a few of you got this, seen some right answers. So endure, I have to endure the sound of my neighbor's discordant piano playing. Okay, let's look at the last one, last screen. Give it a go. You can write the answers to me in chat. Just crossing out the ones we've already used. Oh, hang on. Um, if you said resolve for number three, I would say it's wrong because um, I don't think that works in the present tense. I resolved to film. Um, yeah, I think it needs to be in the past tense, really. <laughs> you stand corrected. <laughs> well, you can admit when you're wrong. Okay. I can talk about some of them. Okay. So the something soldier was seen running away from the battle. I think quite a few of you got these. Lily livered, he was cowardly. I forgot to give you clues again. The lily livered soldier was seen running away from the battle. The little boy had been something about trimming the plants and now there's hardly anything left. So he was too enthusiastic about doing this. He went overboard, had too much energy and enthusiasm. So he was overzealous. If he was zealous, that would have been fine. Just enthusiastic and doing it happily, but overzealous is too much. Um, I'll go back to the previous slide in a second. 
Um, the residents, something opposed the construction of an airport nearby. We talked about a collocation here with opposition or oppose, and that was vehemently. They vehemently opposed. So they passionately, angrily, they're very loud about it. And then number nine, the doctors and nurses worked something in terrible conditions. So even though things were difficult, they were brave, courageous, they didn't complain. So they were, I don't think I've seen any answers for this yet. Okay, now I have stoic. They were stoic. Oh, sorry. They worked stoically, is what I needed to say. But I have now well done. Okay. Um, if you have learned something today, can you give me a like or a heart if you've learned lots? Just so I know. I'll leave that on the board here. And if you would like to do more of these classes, then I run an hour long vocab session every week um, called Body Alive. Good. Just need lots of likes and hearts. I'm glad you've learned something. Um, so the sessions are every week, do an hour, so we cover even more words and the, we have them live and interactive, so there's more interaction and you get um, some revision afterwards and we have contests every week, all that kind of thing. So you can find all of that on the Wordia website. Um, and if you would like the Quizlet for today where you can compete, so you can test yourselves on the words from today and compete to see who can do them the fastest. Then I will put the link for Quizlet in the chat in a second, or in the description for this, um, so that you can, your parents can get the link email to them and then you can compete on there. Put that in the chat for you. Um, someone wants to do it on the side, I'll just show you. So here are the wordier product. So we have some illustrated flashcards. I know a few of the kids on here already have the flashcards. They're my personal favourite, to be honest. Um, so you've got flashcards, an illustrated workbook, so that has some pictures in, kind of like what we did today, and we have a card game for you to do at home as well. Good, I'm glad you got 100%. Well done. Even if you didn't get 100%, well done. You've learned something, and that's the most important thing. And thank you, Saba and 11 Plus Jenny, for having me. I've enjoyed myself. I hope you have too. Oops. Okay, we'll see you later, everyone. Bye. Thanks for joining me. Bye, you're welcome.